member for Falinski. The member for McKellar, Jason Falinski, joins me here in the studio. What is going on here? Because it does seem like the government's running scared and it just doesn't want to face a week of parliament that will just make it look more chaotic than it does at the moment. Well, I'd be very disappointed if it got characterised that way. Um, there will be no difference between the first and the second week in terms of our numbers on the floor. What we're doing is trying to ensure that we use the resources of the parliament and the time of the parliament as efficiently and effectively as possible to get the two things done which the Australian community is crying out for us to get done. The first being the passing of legislation to enable same-sex marriage and the second to advance and clean up the citizenship uh, situation created by some decisions that the High Court has made recently. Sure, but there are 53 pieces of legislation before the House of Representatives yep. at the moment. It includes yep. uh, some to do with uh, banking, the banking inquiry. It includes yep. legislation for the National Redress Scheme. It, redress scheme. Yep. it includes legislation for mandatory sentencing for gun trafficking. Yep. So there's plenty for the House of Representatives to be yep. considering next week. Why not sit and get those kind of things done because that is getting on with business isn't it? Well the answer to that question is the um, Senate already has a backlog of legislation that they need to uh, consider as well as considering the same-sex marriage bill that they're doing at the moment. One is the Australian Financial Complaints Authority which is has passed the House, is sitting in the Senate. This is one of those things that will enable consumers to get redress for banks when they do the wrong thing by them. That, you know, There are 23 pieces of legislation in the House at the moment under consideration. Most of them are non-controversial. Some are. Some are up for debate. But there's a lot more sitting in the Senate waiting for them to um, clear and send back to the House for the debate. As you say, the numbers on the floor of the House don't actually change, even right. with uh, Barnaby Joyce, if he does win the New England by-election. Yep. But doesn't this just show, without him as Deputy Prime Minister and without him in the Parliament, it's somewhat chaotic. He has left a bit of a, a leadership vacuum because it seems some of his national senators and MPs see this as an opportunity to really mm. go rogue. Oh, I don't think that's true. I think that... Um, Barnaby's presence is still felt in Canberra and, and around the nation. Um, not having him there isn't making much of a difference, I have to tell you, because... Barry he, O'Sullivan he, might see it a different way. <laughs> well, well, Barry's views are well known. I mean, there's, there's not much that Barry said today that he hasn't said before. So I, I don't think not whether Barnaby is there in Canberra or not there in Canberra is actually making a difference but to the, the situation. But the point is, the Jason Falinski, if you're telling the public, if you're telling your constituents we yep. don't need a Royal Commission into the banks, we are sorting this out with a parliamentary inquiry, we have made changes, yep. this is what the government is saying. Yep. But then you have members of the government backbench that don't believe that, that are, that are you know, basically yeah. running interference. How yeah. frustrating is that? Well, it's very frustrating for me um, because I have to say that uh, my, my family, when I was growing up, we lost our family home um, because the bank um, took it as security. Um, there was a court case that followed that where essentially bank officers conceded that they'd forged signatures, etc., on contracts. So there, I, I'm sure there are other people in Parliament who feel personally aggrieved by the behaviour of banks, but you know, I'm one of the top ten who feel... And even I think that a Banking Royal Commission, simply put, is a diversion from getting on with fixing the problem. We've had inquiry after inquiry if after inquiry. If you can't inquiry. convince your own colleagues, well, how do you expect the public to Well, I, I guess my answer to that is that I expect the public to listen to what people are saying and they can make up their own mind. Um, if there are people who think that we need a Royal Commission, I, I guess I'm happy to listen to them why, but why doesn't anyone ask them what is it that you think a Royal Commission is going to produce that hasn't already been produced in the innumerable outcomes and inquiries that we've had and the legislation that the government is already implementing, one of which is sitting in the Senate at the moment, being the Financial Complaints Authority, which, for example, gives businesses access to an authority and compensation up to a million dollars, which they don't have to take a bank to court to get. I mean, these are the sorts of things... I mean, these are the questions that really need to be put to the people who are proposing royal commissions, not just on our side, but on the Labor Party side as well. Barry O'Sullivan has also argued this morning that the Dean Smith Private Members Bill sets a precedent. He says, well, Dean Smith has shown another pathway uh, in a way to get legislation through the Parliament. Mm -hmm. How cynical is that? Well, I don't... 
I don't know what Barry means because private members' bills have been available. I mean, I've, I've only been here a year. Well, Barry, as uh, look, yeah. let me read through the tea okay. leaves here. Please do. He's not a supporter of same-sex uh, marriage and right. really doesn't want to see this happen if, if he could help it. Now, you know, I think that yeah. horse has bolted, but he is saying, well, if Dean Smith can introduce a private members' bill, well, surely I can too. We're sure. ignoring the 10 yeah. years in the lead up to the same sex marriage legislation and really using this to its own, his own means. Well, look, I've, I've introduced private members' bills. Um, I'm sure Barry can introduce a private members' bill if he wants to as well. That's, that's a right that every member of parliament has. Okay, but uh, private members' bills don't often get off the ground, but uh, we will see uh, what happens with that. Now, uh, when it comes to the citizenship issue, you say, you know, this will, this will be dealt with in due course, but if, if uh, this doesn't, if Parliament doesn't sit again until December, yep. uh, December 4, that means the legislation to be passed in the House in order for people to get their documentation in order, yep. uh, means that they've really only got a day to table that. Is, is that even possible to do? Well, I don't think there's any Member of Parliament that isn't on notice about this. Um, the resolution has been well aired and discussed. Yep. The Senate's passed a similar one. So I think all of us sitting in the House of Reps know the sort of documentation and declarations that we're going to have to make. So, yeah, look, I think a day's enough. Yep. OK, what about your citizenship uh, status? Have yep. you asked all the necessary questions because I do note that my previous uh, colleagues, mm -hmm. Peter Van Onselen and Christina Keneally, on to the point, yep. did open a, a Felinski file in, in your name. So. Well, you'll be glad to know I have a Keneally file now and oh, we, we can go through that. Um, but <laughs> A dirt file, is it? Uh, been a long? I wouldn't describe it as a dirt file. All these things are well known. Um, no, look, uh, before I even nominated, uh, I had to go through an extensive process of seeking, you know, of determining that I didn't have an entitlement to citizenship of any nation. Um, I've, you know, since then, like virtually every other member, had cause to go back and re-look at that advice or look at re-look at um, the work that we did. It's pretty. It look at the advice or the documentation. Well, documentation, and I obviously sought um, expert advice because. As, um, as uh, good as I might be, and I'm not, um, I'm not an expert on, on you know, a whole bunch of uh, expert national Expert advice doesn't really laws. cut it after the High Court decision and, you know, Malcolm Turnbull declaring and the High Court will so hold over Barnaby Joyce. Don't you agree that there are divergent uh, views here about what is eligible and what isn't? And some of the best lawyers in the country have got this wrong yeah. uh, on, on occasion. Look at the Barnaby Joyce case, mm -hmm. look at uh, yep. Fiona Nash. So. Yeah. Are you, well, are you 100 per cent sure? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so oh. Could you have Polish citizenship by descent? No, I can't have Polish citizenship a by any descent. Any other kind of citizenship? Well, I can't have Russian by descent. Right. I can't have Kyrgyzstani. I can't have English. Mm. I mean, there are 195 countries in the world. <laughs> I'm sure I have Australian. <laughs> well, that's... Look, um, the, your point is the right one, which is until the High Court's decision uh, two or three weeks ago, um, there was some debate about... Uh, how they would interpret Section 44.1. They've now put that debate to rest and all of us now have clarity around what we need to do and where we all stand on those issues. OK, so you're confident that you won't need to be referred to the High Court to sort out, sort out any ambiguity? I'm, I'm confident that I'm not a citizen of another nation or entitled to citizenship of another OK, nation. just quickly uh, and yeah. finally, uh, Jim Molan looks like he could be next in line. Uh, yeah. Do you think there's any question marks over his eligibility to have sit in the Senate? Well, I couldn't think of any that there would be, but, you know, as we've seen recently, the High Court has taken a pretty literal view about Section 44. Um, and, uh, look, I, I'm sure Jim's fine, but um, I, I'm not a lawyer and I'm certainly not willing, uh, as you say, to so hold. <laughs> OK, Jason Belinsky, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Laura. I really appreciate it.